Good evening, top fans. It's Bill from Top Fan Rivalry here. Uh, welcome you to another edition of Top Fan Rivalry Clubhouse. This time, the World Series edition, part two. And I got my good friends here with me, Jackson Westfall and Rob Peterson. So uh, Jackson being our resident uh, uh, Braves fan and, and Rob being our resident, um, well, Cubs fan, but, you know, he's just trying to egg me on tonight. <laughs> but Rob, you got to show him the jersey. With the hat, you got to show him the jersey. That's All right. Jersey so like. <laughs> I, I will say that I am a confused man right now. I've got a Tampa Bay hat on. I, I had to find this from my, my kids' old Little League bucket that they have with all yep. the stuff in it so I found the Tampa Bay hat but one of my all-time favorite players in all of baseball is the great Jackie Robinson yeah that's right I love Jackie. number 42 the the big number 42 um I mean how do you how do you get better than Jackie Robinson right you don't that's the that's the first article that I wrote. Yogi says, "Tell me why the Dodgers are better than the Angels," and I'm like, "Let's start with Jack Roosevelt Robinson, and then you just from there it's all downhill, right?" Right. I mean, so. Jackie is the man. He's he he did a lot for baseball, but uh, you know, I cannot represent these two teams without showing some true colors here. This is <laughs> greatest game ever played was on a Wednesday in Cleveland and you guys <laughs> back in 2016 when my guys beat the Cleveland Indians in one of the greatest world series of all times game seven it had everything um that's I cry a lot in baseball when it comes to my cubbies and that that year I I cried with my kids and I still cry to this day watching replays it was a fun year. It. Fun year. I love it. Well, I'm I'm wearing the Dodger Hawaiian shirt bought by my mother. I told this story last week, but my mom called me up and she says, "You got to come by the house. What's your schedule like?" And I'm like, "Everything okay? You know what's going on, mom?" And she said, "No, no, no. I got your your birthday present for you. My birthday's in December." I said, "Mom, <laughs> it's two months early. What are you talking about?" And she says, "No, no, no. You you got to come by the house. You, you got to have it now." And as superstition goes, right, every game that the Dodgers have won, I've been wearing this shirt. So I haven't washed it. It stays in the same place until the series is over. Um, so it's good times. But let's talk the series. It's pretty Jackson. good right now, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Jackson, tell me, have you been watching the series, Jackson? I have been. Okay, tell I'm, me what you think. Uh, Tampa Bay needs to learn how to hit the baseball more consistently. <laughs> it's, yeah. They're just one of those streaky teams where they catch you and, you know, they do all the damage in one inning, two innings. Uh, everyone except Randy Rosarena, who, by the way, has come out of nowhere. That guy can hit. And I, I feel bad for the Cardinals fans. You know, they trade Luke Voigt and he has a career year. You trade a Rosarena, breaks all these playoff records. No, that, that's some bad business. Got to fire your scouts. Yeah. You're up in St. Louis. Um, <clears throat> but – I think Tampa Bay's hanging with the Dodgers pretty okay. Um, I don't like how they go to the bullpen really early and really often, even though that's kind of their strength. I feel like they need to get some length in game six if they want to stay alive from Blake Snell, and that's going to be tough. Um, the steal of home, the attempted steal of home. I thought it was – watching the replay – you know, he did that probably the best he could, but Kershaw, Kershaw nailed him, stepped off and threw it. If he didn't step off, that was a balk. Yep. But it any, was definitely any, unexpected. Against any other pitcher, that's probably the best move. But as Kershaw said in the postgame interview, right, we practiced at 100. He stepped off with that left foot, and I was thinking about it. I was a left-handed pitcher, and I was thinking about it. And my initial reaction is you always, as a left-handed pitcher, you always step off with your right foot. But then that would have been a balk. But Kershaw had done it, like, perfectly. And I, and I don't blame him. Nine times out of ten, the, the, he's, he's going to steal home, especially with that long thing that Kershaw does. Yeah, that was he, a great play. He comes set, and then he goes up, and he's technically unset until he's back here. So you have that whole window unless he steps off. Yeah. But that was – that was a crazy play. 
I, would have been the first steal of home since Jackie Robinson in 1955. There's your fun fact for tonight. Yes. And it was funny, if you were listening to the broadcast, the last time it happened when a player got thrown out, it was uh, John Smoltz was on the mound. Yes. And John Smoltz was announcing last night, or that two nights ago. And John's like, that happened when I was there? Yeah, he didn't even, he didn't even realize it. He yeah. completely forgot about it. That, that yeah. happened on his dime. So, Rob, you're old school baseball. What do you think about the steal of home? You know, I I um I, I thought it was a I thought it was a good play. I thought he got a good break on 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 it as well. I mean, if if he was a second later, well then he would have been safe and they would have scored a run. And you know, who knows what that could have that could have been a difference maker. I don't know. They still needed to manufacture a couple more runs, but I thought I thought it was interesting. It, it was funny. I follow this. Uh, I follow this Cubs page on Facebook, and after that, after he was called out at home, somebody posted. First of all, if you're going to try and steal home, your your name needs to be Javi Baez. <laughs> That's your first. <laughs> you got to be Javi Baez in order to do that. You remember when he did that in in uh, the NLCS against the yep. Dodgers. Um, but. I, I, uh, it, it was kind of fun to see that, but, uh, as, as Kershaw mentioned, you know, like who was it? Carlos Gomez of the Astros tried to do that to him a couple of years. And so they, like you mentioned, they've practiced that time and time again, because players are getting smart to, to try and do things like that off Kershaw, but he was ready for it, man. And, and kudos to Kershaw, uh, Kershaw for, for making it happen. He got that out. You know, there's was, there was three keys to that play that will go – um, John Smoltz mentioned it, one of them. But there's three keys to that play. The first was Clayton knew where to step off, and you got to give him props. And arguably, you're stealing home against a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I'm not being a Dodger goon by saying that. I think all three of us will agree, first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, secondly, Max Muncy immediately alerted Kershaw because Kershaw can't see it. He's got his back to it. And thirdly, when Austin Barnes caught the ball, he put his hand on the glove. If you noticed, his right hand touched Margot's body, which was attached to the glove. That's why he was out, not because the glove touched him. It was his right hand that was attached to the glove and had um, Austin Barnes caught it and tried to tag him with his left hand, Margot would have beat it and been safe. So there was, there was three characteristics to that play that, you know, we've all played baseball, so we understand. But when you're watching that, it's just some people, you know, I was getting text messages. Why, wow, that was the stupidest play that ran themselves. Like, that wasn't a dumb play. It was very aggressive and it was very, it was early in the game. It was a very smart play. Because at that point you make it three to two and you put every all the pressure on the Dodgers, and so it was a great isn't that, play. Isn't that interesting too, though? That that's what that's why baseball is so amazing is that it's a game of inches, and if one little thing out of those three three uh, things that you mentioned, Bill, if one of those things doesn't go right, well then be safe at home. <laughs> All of those fundamentals have to come into play in order for that out to happen, and it and it happened, and it was a it was a split, um, you know, bang bang play at home. Yeah, yeah, and, and the flip side to that coin too, and I love to get your guys' opinion on this. So, we'll talk about the two bunts in a second: Margot's bunt and Austin Barnes's bunt. But the flip side to that coin is, I was so frustrated the night before, and and tell me what you fellas think. Those relays and backing up home plate is stuff that you learn when you're eight years old, right? And it's, it's almost automatic. And I was explaining to my wife the other night, I was explaining to Amber, I said, Amber, when the balls hit, all nine players move. They all have, it doesn't, it, it may not seem like everybody, it may seem like everybody's standing around, but everybody has a place to go when the balls hit immediately. And Kenley Jensen being down the line, just kind of being a spectator, tells me mentally that he was out of that inning. Because if he's backing that play up, a Rosarena is caught in a rundown, and it ends the inning, and it's 7-7, and then who knows what happens. But Kenley's just sitting there 
you know, obviously mentally beat. I mean, Jackson, talk to me. I mean, did you see that? Did you notice this? And um, what do you think? Yeah, I noticed he did back up home plate. I thought the bounce, he would have been on the third base side backing up the catcher. So I don't think he would have been able to get a Rosarena just because of the weird bounce it took. It hit the umpire afterwards after the Osmus glove. Um, the big thing I noticed on that play was not only did Muncie cut the ball off on a pretty decent throw, mm -hmm. he totally spiked it. And Will Smith did not make a good play on the ball. Yeah. He, he wasn't aware that the runner had slipped. He was already trying to make a tag on someone that wasn't there. And yeah. that's part of that, that heads up baseball. He should have been paying attention to where the runner is to better position himself on the relay. When you're playing catch, when you're playing catcher, it's all positioning. You don't need to move very far. A step or two can change the outcome of a play. Like, a step or two could be three feet, four feet. And with some of the, the throws and some of the bounces, you know, it can be really difficult to make a play if you're one or two feet too far forward or one or feet two feet too far back. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, the hardest position to play on the field physically and mentally because you have to be in on every play. But I thought Smith was probably most at fault for that play, just not being aware of where the runner was. Interesting. I, I could take. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard when you're in the heat of the moment, right? And, yeah. And there's, it's it's a big play. It's a big game. It's a you know the 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 Dodgers win that game and they're World Series champs right now. That's right. A lot a lot of a lot of pressure riding on that. And I think I think Smith just took his took his eye off the off the ball and you like Jackson had mentioned. If you're going to do that, you're going to lose sight of, of what's coming and, 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 you know, you see what happens. But I, I feel for, for Kenley, I think that, uh, you know, I think it was a mental mistake for sure on his part. And with him, I, I haven't really followed him throughout this year, but I understand that he's been, has he been injured? Mm -hmm. Has he had an injury bug? And he hasn't had too many opportunities to save from what I understand, but um you know, this is a big game. This is a big play, and 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 it's that's funny because my my boys they turn to me and they're like, "Isn't he supposed to be backing up the backing up the catcher on that play?" And I said, "Yeah, exactly." You know, chances are he probably wouldn't have got him out based on how the how the ball rolled away. But still, mental mental game is everything when it comes to baseball. And you're right; you've got to be ready for that position. As soon as the crack of the bat, you got to know exactly where you're going to be going on every scenario. And he was just kind of caught in no man's land. And you bring up a good point, too. I mean, neither one of the three of us were in the starting lineup for that game or, or there. And, you know, we don't even play a professional baseball player on TV, right? But the what I, what I think is funny about it, though, is there's things that you do and you rehearse since you're a little kid. And in the heat of the moment, you go on instinct and you go on what you've been trained to do. And just just like um, back in 2017 when Hugh Darbish gave up that home run and it was, it was two nothing asterisk in the first inning um, of game seven of the World Series. Um, he took, when there was a ground ball to first base, he took a bad angle. Instead of running towards the line and running up like you're supposed to do, put yourself in position, he went straight for the base. The ball got overthrown by him, runner on second, next batter hits a home run. And you could tell mentally that he was out of the game. Kenley was mentally, it felt like he was mentally out of that game. And to your point, Rob, I think he's, I think he's had COVID twice this season. Plus last year he had an irregular heartbeat and he was in the hospital in Chicago for a couple of days. I mean, he's had some house struggles, but mentally he just took himself right out of that game. And so, um, you know, Dallas, go ahead. I'm sorry, Rob. Oh, excuse me. The unfortunate thing about all that is, you know, some of the aftermath from, from fans who say some pretty stupid things, you know, when yes. your, your team doesn't win. I, I read some, a few things that, that came after that and, 
it's unfortunate that those kind of things happen, especially it's, we're, we're, it's 2020, right? And we gotta, we gotta be above that. But uh, anyway, that's unfortunate. Hopefully, hopefully Kenley, hopefully he can rebound from that. And, um, and, you know, maybe he's ready for game six, hopefully game seven. Ah, let's go about, let's end it at six. So let's, let's talk little ball because we don't ever like, now it's all about hitting the home run, right? You saw Max drop his bat and watch the home run. Um, you saw Jock Peterson do the same thing last night, which, by the way, that drives me nuts. Again, Rob, you remember when we played, you did that. If, if you hit a home run off me and you stood there and watched it, duck, because I'm walking you on one pitch. But it's kind of the normal now. But you saw the little ball. You saw Margot in that same inning that he stole home or tried to steal home. He bought it for a base hit. And then Austin Barnes, how about that bunt? That's got to be one of the MVP plays of the season right there, or the series. He lays down that perfect bunt, moves the runner over to second. He gets thrown out, but the runner comes in to home, which that was the game that they ended up losing in. But Austin really took, you know, control. So let's, let's talk little ball for a second, because we're always talking about the 450-foot home run. Let's talk about the small stuff first, right, the basics. Oh, boy. I know a lot about small ball. Um, so, as far as statistics go, um, Margot also stole second base after bunting for a single. Yeah. Then he, he's yeah. he got the third on a, on, a throw, on a dealing error by Chris Taylor at second base. Something like that. But anyways, um, they don't steal anymore because the be successful stealing, like to make it worth it to create more runs, you have to be successful 76% of the time. And someone showed a graphic. I think Ricky Henderson was only successful like 78% of the time. He's the most prolific base stealer ever. Like him and Vince Coleman are right, right there. And they're just barely above where you want to be as a, as a steals kind of guy. And people just, they think nowadays everyone's on the launch angle and the spin rate of the baseball and this and that. But, I think small ball is kind of a funny thing because some teams will play it and it's really effective because a lot of teams don't defend against it. You see them set up in the shift. You see everyone's playing like someone's playing in right field. Everyone else is playing on the outfield grass. It's like if you learn how to drop a bunt and move runners over small ball, hit behind people, you can really mess up some of these defensive alignments. And I think small ball will make a comeback once pitchers adjust again to all these guys just swinging for the fences like they have been, like the strikeout numbers have been going up. And there's more runs being scored, but I think the pitcher always wins. You know, they lowered the mound because of Bob Gibson because he was so good. <laughs> I think the pitchers might come back and dominate, and they might have to do something like that again. Juice the ball. Because they juiced the ball a couple of years ago because the pitchers were just shredding lineups. But So, so Rob, how excited are you that – that we got about 20 years on Jackson, and he's quoting Vince Coleman and Ricky Henderson. you got to be a little excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Jackson. No, I, lo I love your number. He played for the Cubs, right? Who? Vince Coleman played for the Cubs? Did he, uh, he was a Cardinals. He was a Cardinals guy. So he was one of our – he was one of our foes. But, man, could that – him and Willie McGee, those guys – Oh, my gosh. How to manufacture runs. And I think you're right. Like – I miss I miss that I miss the manufacturing of a run like see Margos steal second base and then that ball getting away from the shortstop and going out into a little I thought he was going to be out do you see how how late of a break he got when he saw the ball was and he yeah. it down to third base and I mean he was hauling to get the third base but but that was all manufactured and it was bunt single stolen base run run get the third base and then ultimately out at home but i i miss that small ball i wish we because of the shift i think you're right jackson if if you learn how to lay down a bunt on these these shifts these plays or go the opposite way and you can get some you can get some easy knocks um just by playing that small ball but uh, it, it would be fun to see a little bit more of that. I know as a, as a Cubs fan, I was a little disappointed. We've, this year was 
um, we talked a lot about the small ball aspect of it, where we we need to manufacture more runs in order for us to to get more more uh, I mean more hits to get more runs, but um, it's kind of a lost art really in today's game. It seems. Yeah. Jackson's right. It's all about the launch angle and the exit velocity. And I, who cares? The ball went over the wall. I don't care. Like, right. just tell me how far it went. I don't care that it was 112 miles an hour exit velocity. Who cares? It's gone. Right. And, you know, pitchers, I, when I was a pitcher, I knew when I threw a bad pitch and when the guy launched it. I, sometimes I didn't even have to look back. Right. You guys were hitters. You guys knew when you guys squared up something. You didn't wait and go back in the dugout. What was my launch angle? I want to know what my exit velocity was. Who cares? The, the very first time I ever saw a guy named Cody Bellinger play, it was his first season and he had gotten called up and I was sitting on the third base side. I didn't even know who this kid was. And they did this shift on him and he laid a bunt down the third base line. And I'm thinking, why doesn't everybody do that when they shift, right? And then he's on third at one point. <clears throat> and, or no, he's on second and a ground ball into the outfield. And he rounds third and he's going for home. And he sees the catcher kind of move up and it's in left field. And he sees the catcher kind of move up towards the first base line. And Cody literally slides on the third base side and hooks around the plate where he can't get tagged out. And I looked at my buddy and I said, I don't know who this guy is, but he's here to stay. He understands baseball. Now this guy is swinging for the fence every time he goes up. And John Smoltz is right. He's got such a long swing and his body moves everywhere where Corey Seager is just locked in. He's looking at that pitch and he's just one fluid move. Like you're trained on how to do it. And Cody's all, you know, I, every time he swings, I'm like, did that guy just throw on his back? <laughs> I mean, I love him. Don't get me wrong, but doesn't it look awkward? Is it me or is it just just look awkward? So, anyway, yeah, he's been missing some, he's been missing some fish, pitches, but uh, you know, when when he connects, yeah, oh yeah, he's had a pretty swing. Yeah, the one out of thirty five times that he connects during the World Series, it's it's pretty awesome. I tell you, you, you know, Bill, you mentioned uh, Corey Seager. You, you know. I, I've always liked that guy. I remember when he, he just uh he just raked on us cubbies uh a few years ago. Um did he win the rookie of the year? No. And he was he didn't. He did. I can't remember which uh who beat him out, but he was close, but he didn't win it. Was that yeah. twenty sixteen or twenty fifteen? I think it was twenty sixteen. Yeah, I think it was sixteen and there was just a lot of hype. I remember playing, you know, the Dodgers in the NLCS and a lot of hype on Corey Seager, and I can see why, man. He's a phenomenal player. And then injuries and some other things happen throughout the year. So it's – I was really actually pleased to see him win the uh, the MVP of the NLCS. Um, if it were to go to anybody, you know, it was cool to see it go to him because, you know, what he's been doing is pretty impressive. And he reminds me of one of those old school players. Yeah. I just love watching guys like that. I have your fact check. He did win Rookie of the Year. Oh, did he? Did he? I thought he missed it. Who came no, he got, uh, Trey. He beat Trey Turner by a lot. He got all 30 first place votes. Okay. All right. Because I, I, for some reason I didn't. Okay. Yeah, he did. My bad, Dodger fans. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, <laughs> you learned that from a Cubs fan right there. The, the thing that's scary about him, though, it, 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 one of the reasons why we've got to win the series by the way, if we win the series, I think he's the MVP of the series. I mean, he's batting 500 in the series or 480 or something like that. Um, is after 2021, he's a free agent. And the Dodgers need to back up the truck and bring out some cash for him. But there's going to be guys, there's going to be teams out there that are going to try to grab him. I mean, the Yankees are always trying to grab people. They're willing to pay for people. Um, I mean, can you imagine Corey Seager being in with, with Aaron Judge and and uh, DJ uh, LeMahieu and and jo or uh, John Carlos Stanton, that short porch, yeah, that's Murder's Row right there all over again, right? So, there's a reference, Pete. I know you like. I love that. <laughs> so, all right, with our last three couple, four couple minutes, 
tell me what you guys see happening for the final, hopefully the final game tomorrow night, but maybe the final two. What do you guys see? I The things that I, let me just tell you, from what I've understood, um, it, Goslin's starting tomorrow night, which scares the sin out of me, but Goslin's starting tomorrow night, and everybody but Walker Buehler, Clayton Kershaw, and Julio Rios are unavailable tomorrow, but everybody else is completely 100% available. So we'll go in reverse order. Pete, tell me who you think is going to win the series. Tell me your analysis of it and and what you think is going to happen. I, you know, it's been a great, it's been a great World Series so far. I've really enjoyed every game and, and uh, you know, the intensity is there. I, I like, I do like Tampa Bay in game six. I, for reasons like you mentioned, I, I think as a Dodgers fan, you know, seeing uh, Gosling on the mound, um, although he has a good ERA, he, he's been a little difficult in the postseason. I think it's a 9, 9, 9.39 ERA, 0-2. Oh mm-hmm. uh, not going to win you many ball games. Um, you know, Blake Snell, on the other hand, he's, he's been pitching really well. And I think he's got a lot of momentum going into this game. And, you know, every one of those games, they're battling back and forth. So I see, I see Snell winning tomorrow. I see the Dodgers pushing it or the, uh, the Rays pushing it to game seven. Ultimately, boy, I, I tell you, with a game seven, anything can happen. And um, my, my gut feeling tells me that the Dodgers are going to prevail. And they're going to come out on top in a game seven. Um, they've, they've got a lot of weapons over there that's, you know, and, and what's cool about the Dodgers too, is that they've had a lot of these core guys together over the past several years. I mean, I don't know what the free agency looks like on your team, but, you know, ultimately, you know, this team's going to be broken up, um, eventually with some key players who have been a part of it for quite a while. Uh, they're going to be hungry to make it happen this year. So I, I, I think Dodgers in, in seven games, but we'll see. I think it's going to be a fantastic series. Thank you. What do you think, Jackson? Oof. Uh, I agree with Rob. I think game six, Tampa Bay has just been scrappy all year. They're going to come to play. I think it's going to be one of those crazy, really tight games. I don't think it'll be as high scoring as the last, the last couple, like, back and forth games. Might end, like, five to four, four to three, something like that, but – It'll definitely be it, – it's going to be a classic tomorrow night. Um, I, I do understand. I, I thought Gonsolin was the Dodgers' worst pitcher against the Braves. So kind of a head-scratcher for me why he's going tomorrow night. You know, a potential clincher game. He was, I would just throw my best pitcher available to try to close it out because game seven are wacky. Just ask the Indians when they played the Cubs, you know. Um the Indians should have put that series away in game six, but they didn't. And bad things happen when you give the other team life, you give them time. Um, I can also go back and reference the 2003 NL, NLCS where the Marlins beat the Cubs. You know, you can't let that one moment, you can't let the, uh, the Gary Bettman moment, or what's his name? I can't remember his name. Bartman. Steve Bartman. Bartman. There we go. Steve Bartman. Gary Bettman was the commissioner of the NHL. What am I talking about? Ooh, Steve, Bartman. Close enough. <laughs> Steve Bartman. Like you can't let a moment like that where, you know, could have, would have, should have, mm-hmm. where the Cubs, I think, lost their momentum, not from that one play, rather than from the result afterwards losing that game. You know, you can't give a team that's scrappy like Tampa Bay extra outs you can't give them extra opportunities so I think it's a toss-up you know my hope and dream is that the Dodgers lose as a Braves fan but like you said Rob you know the 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 brain is the brain is saying the brain is saying to my heart you know this probably the Dodgers here this is their best shot Tampa Bay is the worst team they face in the World Series out of the last couple of years yeah not that I want the Dodgers to win in game. Yeah. <laughs> Just clarifying. Nobody, nobody does except for Bill. So yeah. I, I definitely uh, want to well. clarify. Although, you know, to to be honest, like I, I am pulling for the Rays. I just love, 
I love these smaller market teams with a smaller payroll than two of your superstars. And, um, but I like a lot of the guys on the Dodgers team. I think they're scrappy as well. And they play good fundamental baseball and Dave Roberts, you got to love a guy like that. Who, um, who's, I, I think he's managed very well in, in LA and, and, um, uh, it's, it'll be interesting. I'm just glad the Astros are out of it so that whoever wins, um, at least, at least it's someone that I can respect, you know, it's somebody that I'm sorry for all the Astros fans. I know that, uh, there's a few out there, even in my family. Um, but just, I, I'd like to see the Rays win, but I, I, I really feel that it's going to be the Dodgers in game seven. You know, I, I agree with both of you boys. I, I worry Blake Snell has something to prove tomorrow night. Um, he didn't have his best outing, his last outing. Um, and Tony Goslin, just like Dustin May, is young. He's going to be a fantastic pitcher, just not this year. Um, I, with a bullpen game going, there's, we have a lot of weapons out there, but it scares me. And game seven is one of those games where all you need is one ball to bounce wrong and you lose the championship. And um, for sun, or for sentimental reasons, if there's a game seven, I hope that Walker, Walker Beeler will be starting it. I hope when the Dodgers have a lead, whether it's one run or 10 runs um, in the ninth inning, I hope Clayton Kershaw closes it out just for sentimental reasons, right? He deserves that side of it. And he's been fantastic in this postseason. I don't, he's four and one with an ERA of under three. I mean, bye-bye the whole thing. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine and a buddy of mine said to me, and I, I couldn't agree with him more. He said, in 2017, we matched up perfectly with the Astros, but we didn't know that they were cheating. And so it was kind of unfair. In 2018, the Red Sox were really the superior team and we knew it. This year, we're kind of the superior team. And I, I'm going to go as far as to say that the two games that we lost, we haven't been beat. We beat ourselves. Um, you know, the, the game that we lost, especially the other night with the bad relay, we just beat ourselves there with bad pitching and, and bad fundamentals. I mean, we should have won that game 7-6. We should have won that game 6-4. And the game where we lost 6-4, again, it was just bad pitching. We didn't beat our – we didn't get beat – the Rays didn't say, hey, we're going to beat you down. Um, now, I said it last week, and I, I'm going to say it again. I think Tampa Bay is one of the teams of the future. They're a young team. We're going to see them back possibly in the Fall Classic soon enough. Um, the Yankees are, are one of those teams. The White Sox are one of those teams. And in the National League, you've got Cincinnati. You've got the Braves. You've got the Cubs. You've got the Dodgers. And they're all young, good, quality teams. I mean, let's not – I hate to say this, Rob, but let's not discount the uh, the Reds. They're young. They're a great team. They're good looking. Um, and if they can re-sign Trevor Bauer, uh, that could throw a monkey wrench in a 162-game season or at least make it a little bit more exciting in the, the Central instead of letting the Cubs run away with it. Fellas, I always love this. This is so, We could do this all night. This is fun. Um, but for you top fans out there watching this and listening to this, we thank you. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe um, and become a top fan on the top fan dot, or topfanrivalry.com page. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week to wrap up what happened in the Fall Classic. Our friends Rob and Jackson, thank you very much. Um, hope to have you back next week to wrap up. What I'm hoping was a Game 6 World Series win for the Dodgers. My cardiologist would like it to go to game seven. I personally would not like it to go to game seven. I can only pace around my house so much and tell my wife to go away so much. But you guys understand that feeling, right? It's October baseball. So I appreciate everybody. And uh, thank you so much.